Welcome everyone. My name is Minister and Prophet Robert Williams. Today is March 16th of 2020. And I have a uh, very important teaching and comments to make about what is going on in the world today. There are a lot of people that are scared of this coronavirus. There's a lot of people taking this to the extreme. They're going way overboard on this thing. But I want to tell you why that they're doing this kind of sort of thing. Is one simple reason. It's called unbelief. Unbelief. And the title of my teaching today is Unbelief in Jesus because they are schooled in unbelief and theology, but not in the Word of God. Now, that is very powerful. This is just what the Lord has just recently given me here shortly. And uh, I want to give you this important teaching. I'm going to back it up with some scripture. So get a pen and a piece of paper and write these scriptures down for yourself. It will help you with your, your, your studies. Uh, I just want to pray real quick, if I may. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, open up our eyes, open up our ears and our hearts to receive the message that you have given us. I thank you for everything that you're doing. I thank you for all getting us all uh, ready for what is happening. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, and like I said, today is teaching is on unbelief in Jesus. Unbelief in Jesus. There are a lot of other gods out there. And a lot of million, a lot of people, millions of people do not believe in Jesus. Because they are schooled in unbelief. Is, or, or, is the Bible allowed in, in, the, in the schools? No. Do the parents teach their children about the Bible? Not many. They might have a Bible in the house. But it probably has about that much dust sitting on it. We need to believe in Jesus. You know, and many people are believe are, are schooled in unbelief and theology. They listen to theology. They go to different seminaries. And they're not taught the whole word of God. They leave a lot of words out, scriptures out. Why do they do that? Because they don't believe. Now, let's go on to the, the teaching. I'm going to explain more about that here in a few minutes. Even Jesus couldn't get everyone healed because of their unbelief. We have two accounts of the same situation. One is more complete than the other. People know the one but not the other, because they are schooled in unbelief and theology, but not the Word of God. Go to your Bible and turn to Matthew 15, 53 through 58. And it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these parables, he departed thence. And when 
he was come unto his own country, he taught them in their synagogue. And so much that they were astonished and said, Whence has this man this wisdom? And how and these mighty works? I just turned my phone off a while ago and it came back on. Sorry about that. I don't want any interruptions here. So let's go up to Matthew thirteen fifty four. <coughs> and when he came unto his own country, he taught them in their synagogues, and so much that they were astonished and said, Whence has this man this wisdom? and these mighty works. Is this not the carpenter's son? <coughs> is this not, is not his mother called Mary? And his brother and James, <coughs> Joseph, J-O-S-E-S, -S, sorry I can't pronounce that, <coughs> and Simon and Judas and his sisters, are they not all with us? Whence then has this man all these things? And they were offended in him. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, save in his own country and his own house. And he said, and he did not many works there because of their unbelief. Turn to Mark 6, 1 through 6. And he went out from thence and came unto his own country. <coughs> that means... He went home, and his disciples followed him, and went, and when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in their synagogues, and many hearing him were astonished, saying, From whence has this man these things? And what wisdom is that which he is given unto him that even such mighty works were wrought by his hands. Is not this the carpenter's son, the son of Mary, and brother James and Joseph and Judah and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And here, and they were offended at him. But Jesus said unto to them, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country, and among his own kin, and in his own house. Has this ever happened to you? Are you a pastor or a minister or a bishop? Has your friends or family members rejected you? I am going through this right now. My own children don't like to hear me talk about the Bible or my call of God. But I know one day God will get their attention one way or the other, they will come around and they will say, I'm sorry for not listening to you. Moving on. Go to Matthew 6, 5. And he could there do no mighty work, 
save that he laid his hands on a few sick folk and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief, and he went around about the villages teaching. Since even Jesus, the Son of the living God, could not heal all the sick people because of their unbelief. See, most of the churches around the world do not believe in the power of God. They don't believe that Jesus can still heal anyone. I have noticed this from some pastors from other denominations. They say healing has stopped when the twelve apostles died. Most churches today don't believe that there are apostles and prophets alive today. That is why you only see pastors, teachers, and evangelists in some denominations. These denominations do not believe in the whole word of God. Some denominations have even rewritten a different translation of the Bible. The King James Version offends them. That is why they reword some of the scriptures or just remove them. Just remove the scriptures that they do not like. Be careful in what translation you read. That is pretty powerful. Just look what's going on in the world right now. We have the coronavirus spreading all over the world. People are getting scared. They're raiding the grocery stores. Some are being quarantined in, uh, in uh, I want to say, concentration camps. You know, being put in different areas, in hospitals and in camps. Some people are even still trapped on cruise ships. They can't leave, come and go. Countries are stopping visitors from coming in and out of their country. You know, I don't like to see this. This is not the world that I saw two months ago. The whole world is changing. I don't like this. I don't like it at all. You know, there's restaurants uh, closing down. The sporting events are closing down. There are even churches closing down. Can you believe that? Churches are closing their Sunday services. I would say Satan is out to steal, kill, and destroy. He's doing a pretty good job. You know, we've had pandemics before in world history. We've had plagues. But they've all come and gone. You know, just in the 20th century, we had a bunch of other plagues that hit the, the world. But this time, <coughs> people are getting scared. They do not know the word of God. They don't know that Jesus can stop this coronavirus. The blood of Jesus can kill anything like that. Because the blood still works. There's a song out there that we sing at church. The blood still works. Don't you believe that? I do. I now have been released 
into full-time ministry. I am about ready to leave Kansas City, and I am going to West Virginia. I am going to help another bishop to preach at the, his church and then go with him to different revivals on the East Coast and down the South. This was given to me, a dream was given to me about 15 years ago. And the Lord spoke to me in this dream and said, Robert, I am going to raise you up like Jimmy Swaggard. And I remembered that I did a research on Jimmy Swaggard. How did he get his start? He got his start by, by uh, teaching and playing in different small churches in the South. Well, when I got that about 15 years or, or so ago, I said, yeah, I, I'm not even going down there. You know, I live in Texas, or I live in here in, in, in the state of Kansas, or in Kansas City, Missouri. I have no intentions of going down there. But guess what? About 15 years later, I have an opportunity to become a co-pastor, assistant pastor at a church in Logan, West Virginia. I leave in two and a half weeks to go there. And I'm going. You know, right now I live with my son. I've been doing that for the last five years. We've been living together. But he doesn't like to hear me preach or teach. He sees me go to church all the time. I go to different churches with the Church of God in Christ. You know, these guys know who I am from the presiding bishop all the way down. They know who I am because I do wear a white tallit. I do carry the shofar that you can barely see in the background right now. And I blow this shofar everywhere I go. So they know who I am. Just like people who follow my ministry, you know, back in November, I stood in front of 40,000 people blowing the shofar. I, I go to different churches doing this. And I teach a lot about the shofar. I tell them about the anointings that I got. I hand out brochures, you know, like, like these, you know, telling them about my anointings that God has put upon my life. You know, I tell this of, of, of the works that Jesus has done for me. You know, because we all have our own call of God. <coughs> Nobody else has a call of God like me. Nobody else has a call of God like you. We're all part of the body of Christ. We all fit together. I'm doing my part. Are you doing your part? Are you being obedient to God? Are you willing to do whatever the Lord Jesus Christ tells you to do? Now, I remember something I heard a while back. Of course, I already knew this a long time ago. But Catherine Kuhlman one of the great God's generals, healing generals, she said, to walk in this kind of anointing, it's going to cost you everything. Are you willing to walk in God's anointing like she did? Like William Seymour did? of the founder of Azuzu Street Revival, William Branham, A.A. A. Allen, Catherine Kuhlman, Jack Cole Sr., Jack Cole Jr., Joseph Buford Dow, are you willing to walk in this kind of anointing where there's instantaneous healings happened all the time? Great signs and wonders follow them. Or do you want to do this? Has God put this upon you? <clears throat> He's put this upon me. 
I have had some of these generals impart all those gifts to me. I even have some of the original Azuzu Street Revival anointing oil that I anoint people. People are being healed. People are being healed. Signs and wonders are following me. Just look at my website. You know, there's many miracles. I've got six pages. You know, a, a small print, like 10 or 12, you know, on the font. Six pages of healings and miracles. Testimonies that come in from people from around the world. <clears throat> I have been praying for my release for a long time. I have now got this release. God has been training me for some time. I've got numerous impartations from some of God's greatest generals and other ministers from around the world. But now I have been released. I'm about ready to get into full-time ministry here in two and a half weeks. You know, that's a great honor, a great privilege. My kids don't like it. They don't want me to leave now, but they don't want to hear me preach either. <clears throat> And I haven't had any big doors, too many big doors open up here in the Kansas City area. But I told God, I prayed to God, I said, if you open up a door, I'll walk in it. I've walked in several doors here. But now there's a big door sitting open. Am I willing to take this step? Am I willing to give it all up for the Lord Jesus Christ? Yes, I am. What am I giving up? I do have my own lawn service. I have to give it up. I'm sitting here in, in a beautiful desk. I have a beautiful desk here. I can't take. I've got to give it away or sell it. I've got a lot of personal items. I've got clothes. I've got other lawn equipment. I've, I've got a lot of stuff here. You know, I've got a lot of stuff. And the only thing I get to take is what I can put in this little car sitting outside. I have to give it all up. Because my son said, you have to take everything out of this house that you own. I don't want any of it here. So if I can't give it away, you know, if I can't sell it, i got to give it away. You know, take it to like a Salvation Army or to a church. You know, that's pretty powerful, you know. Giving up all your belongings. Giving up your business. I make at least $8,000 uh, at least eight thousand dollars a year off one client alone. And I've got other houses and other businesses. I'm going to walk away from it all. We're at the beginning of lawn season. I can make some money at this. But I'm giving it up. For Jesus. This is the second time I have done this. The first time. Because I was obedient to God. The second day I was down in Dallas, Texas. I met up with Bishop Otis Clark. The last pastor of Azuzu Street. <coughs> what a great honor. What a great privilege. But I also got to meet up with um, David Terrell. The Big Tent Revival. That's where I met Bishop Otis Clark on the second night. I started getting more of these generals of God pouring into me. I had a lot of training. I was down in Dallas for five years. My first job, because I was obedient to God, my first job was working on the Dallas TV show with Larry Hagman, J.R. Ewing. That's right, I did that for a year. I was a security guard on the set for a year. 
After that, I left and I went to the Texas Rangers baseball team. I was on their security staff for two years. Now this is, you know, I, I got to experience all that because of my obedience. Now, because I'm stepping out again on faith, I'm going up to, to West Virginia. I've never been to Logan, West Virginia, that I'm aware of. I don't know a soul there. But God has put something on the table for me. He's opened up a door for me to walk in if I want to. I could say no to this, but I know better than to say no. Because God is making a way. It's making a smooth transition for me to do this. I knew this four months ago <coughs> that the Lord said there's, there's a change coming. I didn't know what the change was, but then he started teaching me things. You know, he started saying, get some healing sermons ready to go. Well, what do I want to do that for? I'm not preaching anywhere. But you see, the Lord knew what he was doing. I've got a couple of these teachings ready to go. I just did one a little bit, but I got another powerful one later on to do probably tomorrow. But, you know, why did I have to get to healing sermons? Well, look what's happening in the world today. People are scared to death. People are going to need healing, physical healings, mental healings, spiritual healings. They needed to be lifted up. They need to be edified. To say, hey, Jesus is real. We are living in the last days. We are living in the end times. Wake up. I'd say, we're getting woke up. The whole world is getting woke up right now. God wants, and, and, and another thing that God told me in a dream not too long ago, he says, I want you to start laying hands on more people. And I said, Lord, I don't have any speaking engagements, for, you know, scheduled. The church I go to, they don't let me do that. Because the pastor does not want, he wants all the attention, in other words. You know, there's at least another 10 more ministers sitting at this church that I go to. They give some of them something to do. But me, I don't do a thing except blow my shofar when I feel like it or when the Lord tells me to do it. That's all I do. But I'm not a person who sits on the pews anymore. God wants me to get out there and do things. If he's telling me to start laying hands on more people, start getting some healing sermons ready to go, that means he wants to demonstrate his power. All I'm going to do is get up and preach and teach, blow my shofar, and then I'm going to start laying hands on people, anointing them with this Azuzu Street Revival anointing oil I've got. And you're going to watch Jesus demonstrate his healing power. Would you like to see that? Would you like to see some instantaneous healings? and miracles and great signs and wonders? I bet you would. I do. I'm stepping out in faith to do this because I know he's going to do it. I have no doubt. I am not a non-believer like I just preached about. But I believe. I believe in signs and wonders and miracles. I've been speaking about this for years. I've got over 450 videos up here on YouTube preaching about things, giving you dreams and visions. I've been doing this for years, and now I'm seeing manifestations. I'm seeing the real thing happen. <clears throat> I can't deny it. Yes, I have heard the audible voice 
of God, Jesus, and a personal visitation from the Holy Spirit himself. I have had these manifestations to lift up my faith. As some of you know, I even had a supernatural birth. You'd have to go to some of my archives to hear that. I don't talk about this too much. But I'm about ready to make a move in my life. I'm stepping out of the boat. I'm coming out of my comfort zone, giving up everything I own just about for this call. If I did not know that God was behind this move, I wouldn't be doing it. <clears throat> you know, I went to church the other day at a Bible study. Myself, my friend Bishop Ernest Jefferson, we were, I don't know, about an hour late. And I sat down and, oh, just a few minutes after that, the pastor, you know, my pastor there, he started talking about West Virginia. And then he starts talking about, in Ezekiel, about an amber angel, you know, an amber color angel. I almost fell out of my seat. I said, oh, my God. I said, J just about, oh, I don't know, uh, two or three weeks ago, God gave me a dream that he was assigning an angel to me, and it was amber in color. And they gave me a book. And, and I first saw this amber and white book, and it had a word, a name on it. What the, name, the book was, it's called Hemiletics. What is Hemiletics? That's how to prepare sermons. I said, wow, that's pretty cool. And you know, I was wondering why he gave me that. It was because he wants me to start, he's, he's going to open up doors for me to start teaching and I got to know how to teach on these certain subjects he's telling me to do. And I got to know how to prepare it. And I thank God for that. I love the Lord Jesus Christ with my whole heart. I've surrendered my whole life. The old Robert Williams died a long time ago. Died a long time ago. I was telling God last year, I said, I could care less if I mow another lawn the rest of my life. You know, I, I make pretty good money at this. But money is not everything. I'm here to bring in souls into the kingdom of God. You start producing, God starts producing healings through your hands and through the, the things you speak out in the atmosphere and people see the manifestations of God. They are going to sow seeds into that. They are going to donate money and a lot of it I'm not in it for the money I'm here for the souls I want to see the miraculous I want to walk in miracles signs and wonders I like I said in a lot of my videos I have had dreams when I was in the second grade seven or eight years old that I would be standing in front of thousands of people saying in Jesus name you're healed <coughs> and Jesus healed them all there instantly it wasn't me healing them I couldn't heal a dead frog but Jesus could and he's going to heal them I've seen that I was going to fill up stadiums and coliseums. I had a team of ministers around me. It's not just a one-man show. I'm going to be in the middle of this great end-time revival. And now, Pastor Phil Spears out of Logan, West Virginia. I, he said I can go with him to different revivals around the South. 
just like the Lord gave me a dream over 15 years ago that I would be preaching in the South. I can't deny that. You know, I have an older pickup out there. It's a 1998 Ford F-150. Right now, it couldn't make it to West Virginia. Transmission slipping. <clears throat> Plus, I need a vehicle to go to these different states and to different churches. Can't do it in that old truck. But God made a way. I got an advertisement in the mail for me to go to a, a, a car dealership. And I want to tell you, my credit is not the best credit in the world. It's kind of on the low side. But all I had to do was go in and fill out the application. And here within an hour, <clears throat> they said, you know, you know, I was I was prepared. I had all my financial paperwork ready to go because I've I've bought cars before, and I had to show all my financial paperwork, and sometimes walk through a little hoops to get it. I didn't have to show any of that. They came back in about an hour. Says, when do you want it? Do you want it today? We can give you the car today. Really? Well, I said I have to talk to my son first. It's time to tell him what's going on. So the next day I came back, signed all the paperwork. They kept it another day. They detailed it, made it look very beautiful, and they brought it to me. I have a car sitting out there now. A 2018 Ford Escape has all the bells and whistles in it. <clears throat> sure, I have a car payment. You know. But, you know, I'm going up there on faith. And I asked God, when I got this car, I said, Lord, I want you to pay this car off before my next payment is due. And that's around the 25th of April. That's when my first payment is due. Uh, so I'm asking God. I believe in a miracle from God that he's going to put on the heart of somebody to send in a check or a money order for about $16,000. And it's going to pay that off. And I said, Lord, why don't you just have somebody else or whatever pay my insurance off for a year. I pay $192 a month for full coverage insurance on that car out there. That's about $500 a month. That is little over half of the money that I make. I make a, about you know $1,200 a month. And, and then I'm spending about $500 for a car payment, you know, at least I will be getting a free house, getting a parsonage of the church. You know, the two-bedroom house, it only has a, a bed, a couch, a washer, uh, a bed, couch, stove, and refrigerator in the house. That's it. It's not furnished. That's it. So that's fine. But God will provide for me. He's making a way for me to go up there, to give me a new car sitting out there. He's going to furnish that house as well. And I thank God for this. See, miracles. That's another miracle sign and wonder. And I don't have to pay rent. I don't have to pay utilities. Thank God for that. But I'm going to go. And you're going to see great signs and wonders and miracles. Well, I'm going to go ahead and close because we're almost into 40 minutes of this video. And I know people don't like to, to watch long videos. But I, I, I had to tell you what God just put on my heart earlier today that I needed to teach on this unbelief. And I hope 
that this has increased your belief. So you will believe in God and believe in His miracles, signs, and wonders. I hope to see you at some of these revivals that I'm about ready to go into. Come to the church. It's called City of Faith in Logan, West Virginia. I leave on a Friday, the 3rd. And I hope to be there by that Sunday. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to being there. You know, I don't know a soul up there personally. <clears throat> I've only talked to the pastor a few times and that's it. I'm giving up everything for this because I know God's hand is upon me and I have his blessing. But if you want to help sow into my ministry, the City of Faith, go to my website at GodsMiracleMinistry.com, GodsMiracleMinistryRevival.com, or PropheticInformationMinistries.com, and you sow your seed there. I have PayPal, I also have Givelify, or you can mail in a donation, the address is there. So send it in, you can make your checks out to uh, God's Miracle Ministry, or Robert Williams, whichever one you want to do, and send it in. If you could send it in today, I sure would appreciate it, because I do need some help and finances to get to Michigan, or West Virginia, sorry. Logan, West Virginia. Because I leave in two and a half weeks. And right now, I'm lucky if I got $200 to $300 in my pocket. I, I get paid on the third. That's why I'm leaving. So, you want to help out? You pray to God on how much He is to send, that you, you're to send. And I'd appreciate it. I really would. You sow into a prophet's ministry, and you're going to get a prophet's reward. God will bless you, and this is a tax-deductible donation. You'll get a receipt. So I, I just want to thank you for tuning in, and if you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, please subscribe. Subscribe to my uh, Facebook channel if you're watching on Facebook. And uh, I want to thank you for tuning in. Lord, I just want to ask for a special blessing for each and every one who is watching this video. <clears throat> bless them financially. Bless them physically. Heal their bodies, Lord. And you do mighty works. And give them dreams and visions. And let people come to them. You send people to them to speak edification into their lives. And Lord, use these people to heal others' lives as well. In Jesus' name I pray. And if you want a special anointing or impartation, you come to Logan, West Virginia. Or you can you know, call me up for a prayer cloth. Send me an email at Robert at God's Miracle Ministry, and I will send you out an anointed prayer cloth. It's not going to cost you nothing, unless you want to send in a donation for the postage and handling. I'll send this out to you. I send them all out, all over the world. Testimonies of instantaneous healings happen when they get this prayer cloth. But I hope to see you very soon. And if you would like our team to come to your church to minister a, in, in a revival, so you can see some great signs and wonders and some great teachings out of the Bible that you don't know, to hear great testimonies, then you call us and we will come to your church. 
so you can get a blessing from God. Well, again, this is Minister and Prophet Robert Williams from God's Miracle Ministry and from the City of Faith. We want to bless you. We want to see you. And I hope to see you soon. Because I will talk to you. You come up to me, I'll talk to you. You need prayer, I'll lay hands on you and pray for you for miracles. So, I'll see you later on the next video. God bless. Thanks for tuning in.